Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor and welcome back for another weekly OS Linux first impressions. A lot of that in a different order. <laughs> welcome guys. Today we are looking at Voyager 1404. This is a pretty new version of Voyager. It ch was just released last Saturday. So, it is a French version based off of Ubuntu. It is sporting XFCE right here. And the only complaint that I had when setting it up was that it see I put it on a USB stick that's what I use for my media so that I can save optical and it took a little bit of playing with I was able to get the USB stick to work using ISO hybrid on the actual image file which allowed it to lay down with no problems so that fixed that issue otherwise I did end up with grub boot errors in the beginning the other issue was that when I first started up and started the installation man it just sat there and sat there to a point that I thought it was hosed and nothing was going on. The hard drive seemed to be going for it crazy and so I canceled it. I tried it again it was doing it it was doing that same thing where it's just sitting there looking like it wasn't going to respond. I still had mouse capability. I could still do other things. It just looked like the setup wasn't working and yet I could click cancel and it would immediately respond to me there. So I decided to just let it sit, in which case it eventually went to the next step. Now, most likely I have a feeling that it may have been doing some sort of a system check on the hard drives. I do have in this particular laptop a 500 gig uh, primary hard drive and a 320 gig secondary hard drive. This uh, computer is about Mm, four and a half almost five years old so it could be that there was just a lot of stuff that wanted to go through it is pretty full has a lot of different OS's on there it may have just been doing a lot of system checks to make sure that the hard drive was good for when it got to the partitioning and the, the negative thing about that is it should have popped up and either given me an option to not do that if that is in fact what it was doing or it would have been nice if it would have said I'm force checking SDA for any problems, force checking SDB for any problems, etc, etc so that I knew what it was doing instead of just sitting there doing absolutely nothing at least in my perception so <clears throat> and that being said once we got past that standard Ubuntu install from there on it pretty much, you know, super simple. Went right through, able to, to, to select the proper uh, partition that I wanted to put it on. It was very nice that it asked me if I wanted to install Grub and if I wanted to where I wanted to put it, etc. Because as of like a couple weeks ago, I tried a different distribution, which I my mind's fuzzy now on which one it was. It didn't give me that opportunity. It just immediately said installing Grub on your primary hard drive, and of course, it blew up my current setup. And the other thing that kind of bothers me when it does that is it doesn't do a good job at probing my OSs. I, for the most part, I suppose they just assume that you're going to have a Windows partition. And on this case, I do have a, an older Windows partition. I use it for some legacy gaming here and there, you know, with uh, good old games. It's a it's a great website. We can get some excellent classic games for a decent price. I have a few of those that I like to play, and so I've got that Windows partition pretty much set up for that. Otherwise, I'm almost you know, it's funny. I've I've got I always like to keep one just in case, just in case there's that piece of software that you find out just will not work in Linux and you can't make it work even with wine it's always good to have that kind of backup there I never ever go into it but it's available just for that very reason you know so I've got that and a few other things and it saw that of course but it didn't see my gen 2 partition it didn't see my second Linux partition and so it only set it up for 
the the OS and, and that. Now, I shouldn't. Before we go on, that is with something that happened a few a few few OSs back. So I'm sorry about that that little bit there. This is Explorer. This had none of those problems. This was great to work with. I, I did have some weird stuff afterwards. Let me tell you about some of the stuff I found out. And I'm not going to run it because if this is what caused this to happen, um, then I don't want to redo it. This little bar, it's kind of interesting. I, thought, I saw it pop up and I said, that's weird. What is that? So I look and look at it. And what this is, is it's Tux TV for web television. And I was able to start it up and actually, you know, I'm here in America, uh, but there was no options, of course, for American television, which doesn't bother me none. The you know, American television, I can get that on the television. I don't need no American television. So uh, I, I saw that you could choose English and Irish, and I did get, <laughs> get a little get a little confused when I was looking through. There's all kinds of different nationalities. I saw Armenian, and for some reason my brain kind of turned that around, and I said, "Oh, there's that American television." Now it was Armenian. <laughs> so I I tried that out, and hey, this is pretty neat. I'm able to watch the BBC One here. It's it's broadcasting. It's it's getting everything off the web. It's working, and and then all of a sudden my whole system just kind of goes. I'm like, oh crap! Did I just lose power? Did I forget to plug my my power in because this this battery is is old? It it goes out. And I looked at it. And said, no, no, no. Wait a minute here. I've got I've got a light over here. My got I got lights on here. Uh, the power light down here still on, but everything else was just dead. Let me tell you, nothing was working. It was like it powered itself off. It sounded like an emergency. Just <sighs> and the other strange thing is, I tr I, I hit my power button. Had to wait a while for everything to shut all the way off. Cause nothing else I could do. Powered it back on, and then it just kind of sat there at the press escape for boot options. And didn't want to go any further. Uh, oh, this is awfully strange. So I powered it off. I let it sit there for a couple of minutes, and now we're back up and running. And I said, "Hmm." And before that happens again, maybe I ought to go ahead and get my review done. <laughs> So I don't know if that's my hardware, something to do with this right here, but or anything to do with Explorer, but we'll leave it at that and just see how it goes from on on. Hopefully I can finish up my review and we can call it good and maybe I'll play with it for a little while longer, give it another day or so and check it out and just see if it happens again so I can duplicate it. You know, uh, when you when you do computer troubleshooting I get people who call me up all the time saying, I've got a blue screen of death! It's like, well, did you shut it off and turn it back on again? Yeah. And, and did it come back up? Yeah. Then it was just a hiccup. That happens. Just because you get a blue screen of death doesn't mean your system is hosed. If it reboots, it comes back up. Now, if you get an error like that and you powered it off and you powered it on and it goes right back immediately to a blue screen of death and you can't get out of it, then yeah, you got a problem and we're going to have to take a look at it and see what's wrong with it. But just like this, that one might have been just a strange hiccup. Who knows? You know, the system gets awfully hot. Right now, my left leg is getting burned with the heat that this thing is generating. So... You know, it could have just been, it just got a little hot, even though it's strange because I've only had it on for about 10 minutes right now, so it shouldn't be too hot, but it does get hot quick. And going on with Explorer, as I've said, this is XFCE. They have done a wonderful job giving it a clean, crisp look. You know, simple area up here. You can see our internet, our sound, our battery, time. You know, simple screen recorders up there. Uh, they have a little bar down here for the things that I'm running. For instance, right now, the GUVC viewer. And uh, surprised that simple screen recorder is not down there, too, but they got a couple others. A nice feature that this does come with is the SM Player YouTube browser. 
if we open that up you can see that you know it finds videos that I guess are most popular right now or music I have tested this this does work nicely it's a lot easier to use something like this sometimes in Linux than it is to actually use the browser I've found because it will play it within the SM player for this case or if you're using the YouTube uh, there's another uh, YouTube browser type thing that's in in command line interface that uses M player um, it's just a lot nicer sometimes when you're in Linux to just not have to worry about that flash issue with your internet browser. That works really well. Now they have a good software application, but my only negative thing about the software application stuff, and let me see if I if this is the one. Nah, that's that's something else. I'm gonna tell it to remind me later. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, the Ubuntu Software Center they have here. Now, because uh, this version of Linux comes from France, there is a little bit of... And I can't move that out of the way. Oh, well. You don't need to see my ugly face anyway. But there's a little bit of stuff here that you kind of have to get a little bit of both worlds here. Like this right here is in French. This right here is in French. This right here is in French. There's a lot of French in here. And I'm not saying French is bad. I'm just saying if you're not a French speaker and you don't understand and read French language, then you're going to run into maybe a few problems with this. Now, everything else seems to be in English, but there are bits and pieces that are just still in those of the developers and I don't have a problem with that I can figure stuff out like the VLC I, I'm, I'm familiar with at least the icon and if you go on and look at it further you can normally figure it out exactly what it is it's just you do have to worry about some things that are still in in French even though I've set up everything to be locale being English like this right over here uh, sling cold underneath it there it's in it's in French so you do have some stuff that's still not quite a hundred percent in the locale or geographic area that you might have set when first setting up the OS. That's not a showstopper though. Everything else seems to work very well. It did come with Firefox, however, I was easily able to install Chromium. I did play some games on here earlier. I put Chromium VSU, which is a side-scroller kind of shooter game, which was kind of fun to play. It came with Sudoku and a few other things here. A few internet applications, like I said, the Firefox browser has an IRC program. I did install, like I said, Chromium just to see how easy it would be if someone didn't want to use Firefox and wanted to use, say, another different, a different browser. Transmission, of course, for torrent files. Did come with GIMP pre-installed. Surprisingly, though, in Office area, no LibreOffice, just bare bones. As you will see here, Abbey Word, I guess, would be for that numeric for your for your um, calculator type stuff. Of course, your typical accessories, and then of course your system and all that. Of course, multimedia, a lot of different multimedia. Clementine, one of my favorite simple music programs to work with. I could have used Kazam probably. It's a screen capture program instead of installing simple screen recorder. However, it wasn't much of an effort at all to get all that working and it was very easy to manage. The control panel system is down here and it was very simple to fix things like I hate tapping with my touchpad and some other things but that seems to be simply fixed. I mean, at first I looked at here and said, eh, I don't see mouse anywhere, but that wasn't a big issue. I could just type in mouse and get right to mouse and touchpad and be able to fix that. You know, very simple to find and fix, set up and change. As I said, their interface is very crisp, very clean. I like that about an OS. It seems to work out well. I like the little widget here with your time and date and CPU usage and all that going on right here is telling me how much RAM I'm using and, and and those sort of things it's nice having this little bar that shows you what's what you can open for quick launch 
and they of course set it up with four different screens so these are all just the default screens and all that that's kind of interesting and I might as well bring this up real quick if uh, hopefully it doesn't blow up I'll be upset if it does but uh, let's take a chance right so that's not exactly what I thought it did the last time hmm Maybe that's what I did. Free Tux TV. I still thought this was pretty cool. I may look at this and see if this works on a different uh, different system. Check it out a little bit more. But it goes through and it finds the television programs that are available through the web. And I half expected it to say, well, for BBC for instance, oh, you're not in the UK, so you're hosed but it didn't so that was kind of nice uh, see if it it's still doing all its synchronization I wonder if it blew up because I was in it maybe that was really the cause of it so either way hopefully it, don't, it doesn't blow this, this again all in all super simple to use of course the only caveat is it is Ubuntu based however um, they do have a Debian version of Voyager and I really wanted to do the Debian version instead of Ubuntu but Ubuntu was the newer of the two so I wanted to go ahead and and do this one instead so that uh, it was newest and, and latest and greatest for my setup of videos and as you can see here I've got the web TV English and web radio English web programming in English, web cam English, and then the Irish, and then like I said, I kind of screwed up thinking I looked at that wrong and for some reason when I first looked at it I saw American and not Armenian. <laughs> uh, you go in there and you can have all these different channels. So I went to BBC, um, I think I went to BBC News or BBC World and it just started playing BBC on there which was kind of neat. You can record through this thing just like a uh, DVR and it's got some interesting options I've never heard of it before I don't really watch TV too much through my computers but this is something definitely I'm gonna take a look at just because sometimes it's nice to get a world perspective and get a much better idea than kind of the closed-mindedness that we sometimes get here in this country So check it out try it out that is Voyager I hope you enjoyed this we have one more distribution to review and I will have my 52 unique distributions and 52 weeks completed I'm not sure where I'm gonna go after that I'm sure there'll be something that continues on but we will move on from there thank you very much for watching whether it's morning evening noon or night whatever you're having I hope it's a good one and we'll chat with you all later bye guys <laughs>